From an equipage standpoint, uh, what, what do we think pilots are going to have to put in their cockpits and what's the time frame? The final rule for the NPRM is due out next year, so I think we'll have a little bit more clarity there. But uh, from basic architecture, they, they need a uh, uh, certified WASP GPS receiver, many of which uh, currently exist. Some 30,000 Garmin WASP GPS receivers are currently, uh, currently in the field. And then it's the, uh, the automatic broadcast part of the ADSB, which is a, a method to broadcast that information periodically. So that would either be a MODES transponder with extended squitter or a universal access transceiver. And here in the US, General Aviation has the option to choose which of those two technologies that they'll use to comply. The current uh, proposed mandate is that 100% of operators operating in controlled airspace have to be compliant by 2020. By 2020. 2020. Okay, so when I think about my cockpit, um, I've got a Mode C transponder, right. but I don't have Mode, mode S. I have uh, no extended squitter, right. um, at least that I know of. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, I'm going to have to buy a new transponder, it sounds like, and, and, and well, if I do that, well, let me, okay, let me, Tim, let me, Tim let me says no. Uh, as Dave said, there are, there are two frequencies, and one of the nice things about the two-frequency option is that if you have an aircraft like yours that's got a mode AC transponder on it, you can leave that alone. You can go to the second frequency, you can go to the, the 978 frequency. There's two parts to ADS-B. There's the bit where you tell everybody where you are, and there's the bit where the system sort of vomits back to you where everybody else is. That's, that's the two parts of it. The requirement is only to have the bit where you tell air traffic control where you are. You're not required to have the bit that, that gives the information back to you. That's optional. There's a lot of benefits from it, but it's, but it's optional. So if you just want to be compliant, just the bare minimum, all you need to do with your aircraft, you have to put a WAS in. Okay. I've got it. Either, you probably already have. And then you put a simple um, UAT, or just, it's, actually an, it's actually a little data radio. It's a 978 megahertz data radio and you're done. Little control panel because your transponder is sending out a squawk occasionally and the FAA wants the other system to send out the same squawk. So you have to have a little way of dialing in that squawk. But that's, that's it. You can leave your transponder alone. You put this other little thing in. You can share the antenna if you wish through a, a okay. device. So, so it's, it's not, not so horrible. That's the minimalist approach then. That's, that's, the, the that's what's yes. called ADSB out. out. Yes. And so I'm just telling the world I'm out here. One, once a second. That's the autonomous bit. Once a second, you turn it on. And so, goes. okay, the world knows, knows where I am. And, yep. and then, uh, but if I want more benefit, if I want to be able to get information back into the cockpit in the form of traffic, where, where's everybody else? Because they're out there all sending their signals, so why can't I get a hold of that mm -hmm. and show that somehow in the cockpit? And the other benefits that have been imagined, at least, for ADS-B in would be well, weather no. coming back into the cockpit well, no, in addition no, to traffic. No, not imagined. The ADS-B... The ADSB full service is available right now in Florida, south of Orlando, in the entire Gulf of Mexico. By the end of next year, it'll be available over two thirds of the US in, in current radar airspace. That's its promise. It's fully functional. The, the weather part of it, the free weather, free traffic, um, is available today in those areas. And that's part of the initial rollout. So, so if, you, if you have the receive part, and it can, for traffic, you can receive it on the transponder or you can receive it on the 978. For weather, you can only receive it on the 978. That's, that's a broadband service. And it's equivalent to XM weather. It's the same picture you get with XM, basically, except, again, it's, it's government provided, government guaranteed, so it's more likely to be there long term. Sorry. And, and, uh, <clears throat> um, and, and that's, that's becoming available. For that, you need some kind of receiver. And it can be integral with the transmitter or it can be separate. The, the RTCA rules allow it to be either way. And uh, you have to have some way to display that. And that depends on how your, your cockpit's configured. You probably have something that you can display it on already or you put some simple display in. So uh, uh, perhaps a handheld device, mm. computer of some sort, might be a place to display that information? The, the, the FAA is being a little difficult about that. Imagine that, yeah. the FAA difficult. <laughs> I find yeah. that hard to believe. 
Pro right. Probably, right, right, right now the way the rule is contemplated, and as Dave said, the final rule isn't, isn't until next year, they contemplate some kind of installed display for the, for the traffic and weather. But we'll right. see. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com.